Hey hey guys, welcome to BMW Blog and welcome to Salzburg Ring. As you can see, I have a very special car behind me. But before we get into that, I wanted to introduce you to Dirk Hacker. He's the vice president of BMW M Engineering and he knows everything about this car. So what's this car? You might have guessed immediately, but I'm going to let you take a quick look before we jump in, Dirk. Okay. So what do we have here? Want to just tell them? Yes, here we have the second generation of the M2. The first pre-drive here at the Salzburg ring. We want to show the performance of the drivetrain, but also of the chassis. First impression of the driving dynamics. And I'm very interested. And in what is your impression? Sure. So before I tell you mine a little bit, let's talk about the car first, right? So maybe let's start with the design a little bit, or maybe the dimensions, the proportions, and then we jump into the technical specs. So how is it different than the current M2? Uh, I think we used the technique and the design in some cases from the M3 and M4. Okay. So we have the same powertrain, the same drivetrain. We have uh, the same axles, chassis components in the car. Okay. We use the performance of the M3 and M4 mm -hmm. to translate into the new um, M2. Okay. So the car has a shorter wheelbase. Mm -hmm. The track width on the front and the rear is the same one. Okay. We use also the same um, tires and wheels. So we used the Good, I think, very surprising performance of the M3 and M4 for the transformation into the M2 dimension. So before we jump into that, basically what I saw from behind when we looked at the car, that it's quite wide. It, it looks really wide, massive, really nice shoulders. And in some way, it reminds me of the 1M. So I feel like the transformation has been so radical that it's really wide and it's got a nice stance from the back. So maybe can you tell me a little bit about the wheelbase like in the back or the width a little bit? Has that been the same as the M3 and M4 basically? It's very near to that. It's very near to that. It's much bigger than the normal 2 Series. Sure. I think you can compare it from the impression um, also to the predecessor M2. I think it's a statement, it's a bold statement of its own on the roads and we want to copy that also for the new generation of the M2. Perfect. So since we talked about wheels a little bit, can you tell me what options people have when it comes to wheels, tires? We use the same um, tire um, sizes um, like the M3 and M4. Okay. So it's 19 inch on the front, 275 millimeters, and on the rear 20 inch wheels with um, 285 millimeters. And there's no additional option besides the Cup 2 offer, okay. but no difference in the dimension of the tires. Understood. And because the car is quite powerful, I can tell you that because I was on the track, it needs some proper brakes. Want to tell us about the brakes? We have the same brakes like in the M3 and M4. Mm -hmm. We will not offer the M carbon um, brakes. We have no decision to do that, okay. but we have the same performance like in the M3 and M4 okay. for the handling of the car, for the brake um, performance of the car. Sure. And since we're on the design and the exterior a little bit, carbon fiber roof, will be that available? That would be an option, yes. Okay. Um, BMW individual colors maybe in the future? It could be an option. Could okay. be a good idea. And performance parts? Yes, we will also offer that, but I will not um, go into detail what okay. our, we will offer. Right, fair enough. And when it comes to the sound, there will be a European version of the car basically with the OPF filter and a US one, same as the current generation? Yes, yes, we have to do that for the regulation all over the world. Okay. So you will have an EU version, but also US version. But I think you can also compare it to the M3 and M4 because it's the same legislation, the same homologation of the cars. Okay, sure. So now let's talk about specs a little bit about the engine, maybe the transmission choices. So, so let's start with the engine. Which one is it? It's a six-cylinder inline. We have also in the M3 and M4. Okay. The internal code, I think you know that, it's S58. Okay. And we will have an option or power about um, like the predecessor M2 CS okay. around that. And we will combine it with a manual gearbox or with the M-Steptronic. So you can choose between both um, drivetrain options gotcha. and with the same power. So same power for both cars. So there is no differentiation in between the M3 manual like we have right now and the M3 uh, auto basically. Okay. And when it comes to the transmission, is it imported from the M3 and M4, both of them? Yes, most it's, it's, it's imported. Um, we have only a different setup, mm -hmm. but not a mechanical one. It's more a software parameter setup, um, especially for the M2. Um, but the technique is, is, is uh, the same one. Okay, so now if we compare to the F87 M to the outgoing generation, can you walk me through some of the mechanical changes, maybe suspension, steering, dampers? Can you outline the differences? I think um, the most important difference, um, if you take a look on the M2 and the predecessor, 
is the change, the difference to the um, M3 and M4. Okay. So in this car we have smaller differences, nearly no differences to the technique of the M3 and M4. With the predecessor we have also the axles, the steering from the M3 and M4, but a complete different um, wheel and tire dimension. Okay. So in these days we can also use the performance of the M3 and M4 to transport into the um, M2. Okay. In the predecessor we have uh, elder generation of tire dimension and therefore we have with a new car also a bigger impact for a better performance on the racetrack. Okay, and when it comes to the variable dampers, it's yeah. that going to be available in this car? It's standard in this car, so it is also a big difference um, beside um, the M2 CS mm -hmm. from the predecessor active damper system, it's now standard in the new M2. And of course all the M customers, M fans, they always care about the steering input, they always want more and more precision there. Any work that you've done there? Yes, when we, when we take the same technology of the M3 and M4 to the M2, so we take a look also on the shorter wheelbase, we want to get a more agile car in the M family than the M3 and M4. We use the same steering rack, but we do a different setup in the parameters to get this very precise and agile steering characteristic. Okay, understood. And when it comes to the driving modes, I guess I can share a little bit what I've noticed that there is a wider gap in between the driving modes. So it feels like the comfort, it's a lot more comfortable, but Sport Plus, it's a lot sportier. Is that a true statement? Yes, that's right. That's right. So that's a difference also from the F87 M2, basically. That's, that is a big difference because you, you need this, um, this option of the adjustable damper control. If you don't have that, you can not so differ between the Comfort and the Sport Plus feature. In this car, we can use that. Understood. And this was based on the feedback maybe from customers that they wanted to have like a more comfortable daily driver? I don't think so. They don't, they, if they choose an M2, the comfort is not the most impressive um, okay. characteristic. But I think on the other side, if you can unexpected fulfill this requirement, um, you get a comfort car for everyday driving on one side, on the other side, a very well performing car on the racetrack, I think that's the best offer and the best uh, surprise. All right, sounds good. Uh, I guess, is there any other difference from the current M2, or maybe the wrap matching? So in the, in, in the past, we have the combination of traction control system, stability control system and wrap match. In this car, we have it completely different because it's up to you to choose the option with or without wrap matching, um, independent from other um, functions of the car. Okay, sure. Of course, seats are equally important. Um, what are the options in this car? So we have the standard, the M Sport seat. Mm -hmm. I think you know also very now from the M3 and M4, but we also will offer the M Carbon seat in this car. And I think especially for the M2, it's an additional offer of performance of feeling in the car, okay. feeling combined with the car, integrated in the car. Mm -hmm. So we will also offer the M Carbon seat um, from the M3 and M4 into the M2. We're not going to talk much about the design, but I can maybe share this, that the, the slats look a little bit different than on the M240i, so maybe that's a way to differentiate the two cars. When it comes to engine cooling and things like that, has, have you done any additional work, maybe compared to the M3 and M4, or maybe even compared to the previous M2? No, we take the same system from the M3 and M4, and we test the car in um, similar surroundings, and we want to get this um, performance of the car um, to the points of cooling system. But with the M3 and M4 technology, uh, we are very good preconditioned. Okay, so now a uh, personal question. If it was up to you and you can only buy one M2, would you get the six-speed manual or you'll go in for the auto? Um, it's a good question. Uh, it depends a little bit. I think um, the more characteristic traditional one is the six-speed manual. Could be my favorite. Okay. for the private car. And mine too, because I have a feeling that you no know, manuals are not going to be here long enough. And uh, this might be the chance for a lot of people to actually, uh, you know, jump into an M2 with a six-speed manual. So before I let you go, I also noticed the anniversary 50 years of M badge. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, for the 50th anniversary in two, uh, 2022, we will offer this um, badge for all M and um, M power cars, M performance cars. Mm -hmm only in this year, mm -hmm. so we'll have the possibility to get an M2 to the end of the year, perhaps with this um, batch. Okay. And also on other cars.
Speaking about the M anniversary and all of that, can you tell me what's exciting about this year for M and things that we might expect? Maybe you want to tease something that people are, you know, excited to see or might see. Also, we will have a lot of different new launches, mm -hmm. M2, M4 CSL, okay. you know, the Touring. Mm -hmm. We also announced that the we XM. get with the M3 Touring, mm -hmm. the XM, you can drive later. Okay. Motorsports, it's very important for us. We are very happy with the launch of the M4 GT3. We hope to get a lot of victories in these years. Okay, well, Dirk, thank you so much for all the details. I appreciate the insight. I look forward to seeing the car in, you know, without the camo on it and maybe drive the final production car. Uh, and for now, thanks for having me and we'll see you soon. Guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one.